his word frame the heavens cast the stars into the sky commanded the sun to burn and made the earth to spin his word hollowed out the mountains his word damned up the parameters of the sea and said go here and no further his word caused grass to come up out of dirt and corn yielding seed, each thing after his own kind. He did it not by fertilizers, shovels, and hoes. He did it by the power of his word. He wrote his word on the mountains of Sinai. He wrote his word on the walls of the temple in the book of Daniel. He scribbled in the dirt when the woman was caught in the act of adultery. I'm talking about God and I'm talking about word. In the book of Exodus, when he was fighting Pharaoh, it was God's mouth that he fought with. Pharaoh was had horses and chariots and soldiers and all God had was mouth he turned to the lice because he speaks lice and said go get Egypt he spoke to the locust because he speaks the locust and said go after him God speaks if you were to speak to lice you wouldn't know the language if you were to speak to frogs you wouldn't know what to say but God spoke the language of frogs until the frogs heard the word and started hopping toward Egypt. One day they woke him up out of sleep in the middle of the storm. They couldn't handle it because they didn't know what to say about it. And Jesus woke up and stood on the edge of the ship and spoke to the waters because he speaks water and said, peace be still. And the wind lay prostrate in the floor and the water was slain because God Look at somebody say, he speaks my language. I don't care how high you are, I don't care how low you are, I don't care how black you are, how white you are, how brown you are, how intellectual you are, how illiterate you are. If God can talk to a frog, he can talk to you. God speaks my language from the word logos to the word rhema he speaks both dimensionally i want you to understand that logos is the general word of god it's the, just the very general word of god itself that communicates his ability to do something or his general will on a matter but rhema is the word of the holy spirit speaking to the specificity of your circumstance the difference between logos and rhema is that logos is a suit you bought off the rack and rhema is a tailor-made suit that cuts in where you cut in and can't nobody wear it like you wear it because it was designed for you The Holy Spirit quickens to a specific person for a specific situation. A specific person for a specific situation. He knows how to speak to that person for a specific situation. He knows how to speak to the king. The heart of the king is in my hand. I turn it any way I want to. I can speak to your boss. I can speak to the credit union. I can speak to the lending institution. I can speak to the committee. I can speak to the board because I'm God. I know how to wake them up in the middle of the night. I know how to give Pilate Herod a dream. Pilate a dream that unsettles him. I can handle your situation because I speak the language. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And in all of that speaking, many times his truth is revealed without a word. Without the usage of a word at all, his truth is revealed, never explained. Some of you are waiting for an explanation and you have been waiting 
for God to explain himself and real authority does not have to explain itself. It just is. My mama would say it this way. I say, why mama? She said, because I said so. <laughs> he reveals often without a word passed between us. Like the incarnate Christ, God is often revealed, not explained, not explored, not spoken. He is revealed. The word, the Greek word for revelation is apocalypse. It shouldn't strike danger in your heart. It literally means unveiling, like you unveil a painting to pull it up to expose it. You are blessed any time God lifts his skirt and shows himself. You are as blessed as, as Ruth is at the foot of Boaz. And the Bible says she was there under his skirts. Whenever God lifts his skirts, he reveals himself to whom he will reveal himself, how he will reveal himself, because he is God and he knows how to reveal himself to have the greatest impact on your life. That's why we can hear the same message and receive different things because to this one he revealed it that way and to that one he reveals it that way and to this one he reveals it that way and that's why every time you hear the message you hear something you didn't hear before because you are getting a different point of view as he turns around and around and around he reveals himself as you grow yourself to be able to handle what he would show of himself to you. In the Gospel of St. John, in the beginning was, in the beginning was, in the beginning was, in the beginning was, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Talking about Word, verse 14, and the Word was made flesh. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is God talking and made flesh. His Word materialized. It's hinted in the book of Genesis when it says the voice of the Lord walked through the cool of the garden. It's the first hint that God has a Word that can walk. The walking Word is Jesus. The walking word is redemptive. The walking word is sanctification. The walking word is justification. The word walked through the garden. The word walked through the garden. And the word said, Adam! In the journey of personal development, one of the first things to learn is the lesson of the seasons. Let me cover as much of this as I can before we take our first break for the day. The lesson of the seasons for your notes life and business is like the changing seasons one of the best ways to illustrate what's happening in your business what's happening in your life is this illustration of the changing seasons Frank Sinatra used to sing life is like the seasons now here's what's next. You cannot change the seasons. One of the things to, you know, come to grips with is what you can change and what you cannot change. You cannot change the seasons, but here's the next phrase, but you can change yourself. Therein lies the chance to live an extraordinary life. Learning to change yourself. In an economic sense, my mentor put it this way, to climb the ladder of success as high as you wish to climb, here's the key, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. 
He said, if you work hard on your job, you can make a living, which is fine. But if you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune, which is super fine. Then let's put it in philosophical language. Two things on economics philosophically. Here's the first one I learned. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy. You know, I didn't learn that until I was 25 years old. They never taught it in high school. I went to college one year and never heard it. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy, not the economy. Then when I finally understood that, I got excited about it because I knew I couldn't change the economy, but I was assured that I certainly could change my philosophy. And I did that. And here's the philosophy. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. Success is not something you pursue. It's something you attract. So the key to the better economic future is to become a, an attractive person with an attractive personality, a, an attractive list of skills, your knowledge of the marketplace, your ability to deal with a variety of personalities, all of those things that anyone can learn with a bit of study, practice, repetition. So the key is you cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. But let's talk about the seasons, just in a brief outline here. Number one is the winter time. I don't know where we've caught you this weekend. Maybe it's spring for you, maybe it's summer, you're toughing it out, maybe it's harvest, you're cashing it in. If we knew the story, we'd let you lecture. But maybe for some of you, it's one of those winter times, personal winters, social winters, economic winters, there's a variety. So what about the winter? Make this note, it always comes. So you gotta be prepared. Hopefully you've done your homework. You're ready and prepared for this winter more than you were some others that have come into your life where you were less prepared. Make this note of a Bible story. It's very important because it's one of the great lessons of life I'm an amateur on the Bible, but here's what the storyteller says. There were two nice people. So make the note now, two nice people. Not one good and one evil, but two nice people. However, and that is the drama of life. However, two nice people. However, one built his house on the rock and the other built his house on the sand. Two nice people. Meaning it's possible for nice people to be casual. It's possible for nice people to be careless. And sometimes you can be careless and lose your life. Not evil, just careless. In Los Angeles now, when the light turns green, if you're in your car and you're there at the intersection and the light turns green, you better not go. For two or three seconds, waiting for the maniacs that are running the red light, crossing in front of you, even though the light is green. That little extra bit of caution, rather than being aggressive, little bit of caution could very well save your life. Here's a father who loves his family. He's an honorable citizen. He makes good money. He contributes to the community, his church. He's a good man. But this morning he's in a hurry in Los Angeles, late for an appointment, and he's pushing it and pushing it with his automobile. He comes to the intersection and the light turns red and a little voice in his head says, go ahead, you're late, you can make it. And now he's dead. You don't have to go to Iraq to lose your life. You don't have to be evil to lose your life. All you have to be is a little careless at an unfortunate moment. So the key is to be not overcautious, but to be cautious. Don't build your house on the sand. 
Now add this note now, we're all tempted. When I was growing up, there was a cartoon of a little boy and it showed this little boy with a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder, both whispering in his ear. And the little devil said, go ahead and do it, it'll be okay. And the little angel says, no, 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 it won't be okay. Yes, go ahead and do it. No, no, no. How often does that occur for all of us? Every day. Go through the red light, it'll be okay. We must beware, okay? Not to be careless, not to be casual, and build your house on the sand. The same is true with your health. Don't build on the sand. The same is true with your career. Don't build on the sand. The same is true of being in business. Don't build on the sand, build on the rock. Because even nice people can make careless decisions, casual decisions that accumulate over a period of time. And those could be the winter. Now here's the note to make. Some winters are of your own making and some are not. Some are just the winter experiences. Maybe the whole country goes through it. It was a long time of winter for the Russians who lived through the communist system for about 80 years. Long winter of political despair, lack of freedom. But what's the key to the winter? Here it is in simple language, hang in there. I mean, you know, winters don't last forever. Some are difficult and some are easy, but they never last forever. The night always comes after the day, but it doesn't last forever, just a few more hours. And if you hang in there, say your prayers, gather a little strength, you can make it through the winter and the night. What I'm looking at, what are the uses for your life right now that you haven't even reached for yet? See, I believe that when you don't have enough encouragement to act on your dreams or ideas or you're not enlightened enough, that life will act on you. See, life had moved on me and said, Les Brown, you have outgrown this. It's time for you to do something else. Well, I wasn't enlightened enough. I organized some disc jockeys and got my job back. <laughs> so they had to find me again. <laughs> I got fired twice. Here's what I did. I had to think of something else. And so a guy suggested to me, he said, Les, why don't, why don't you run for office? I said, man, I never run for office. I've never known anything about it how to operate in the political arena. I've heard encourage people to register to vote and get out to vote, but I don't know anything about politics. He said, well, neither do the people who run for office all the time. <laughs> so I ran. Now here's what I'm suggesting. I ran. You got to do what you can where you are with what you have. I didn't have any money. I didn't know anything about the political process. I didn't even have any support. But here's what the guy told me. It's possible you could win. That's all I had. I was running against an endorsed candidate. He was an incumbent. He had the newspaper support, all of the leadership in the community. And I was challenging this guy. So I had a saying when I was on radio, stand up for what you believe in because you can fall for anything. And I would go door to door. I have my kids on one side of the street. I would be on the other and I'd, I'd knock on doors. Hello, my name is Les Brown. Tell everybody I'm still standing. They get on the phone. Child Les Brown was to my house today. You know the boy on the radio with the big mouth? Yeah, they fired him, honey. <laughs> Say, he's still standing. See, I'm saying just, just keep moving. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself. Don't spend time blaming and talking about what happened to you. See, whatever you talk about, that's what you multiply and expand in your life experience. So don't talk about stuff unless you want it to keep on happening to you, all right? So I got in that kind of action. As I continue to do that, had my children with me, were going door to door, didn't have enough money. Eventually, we got close to the election and something happened that really surprised me. Guys who I thought were going to either support me or stay out of it, various powerful community leaders, they became involved in it and they endorsed my opponent. I felt devastated. Now that's going to happen to you when you're working on your dream. Things are going to happen 
that's going to catch you on the blind side. That was shocking to me. They didn't have to do that. All they had to do was just stay out of it. <laughs> but here they go, come up in there messing with me. Now that's going to happen. There's some people who believe it's their personal business to stop you from living your dream, all right? <laughs> But I didn't deal with that. You want to make your dream come true, you got to stay focused. Some people rather get even than get ahead. Stay focused on where you want to go. I just kept on doing what I was supposed to do. And so I was driving to the radio station. My opponent had over $20,000. I had less than $800. As I was in the radio station, the guy said, you're going to make a commercial? I said, yes. He said, it better be a good one because that money can't go pretty far here. And I sat there in the middle control room and I was thinking, and here's what happens when you get still. Stuff will start coming. Something said, call your mama. You used to talk about your mother on the air all the time. Ask her to say a few words for you. That'll be a different kind of political spot. So I called my mama and I had a, a, a gospel record playing in the background. <laughs>